I'll tell you, it gets spicy. It gets very spicy on more than one occasion. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still Sisterhood of the Traveling Panties. So, <laughs> like I said, it's gonna give you everything. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. I am Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly, here today with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8, and I just have one question for you all. Have you ever watched the show? <laughs> uh, well, if you have, you know this next queen has us all green with envy over her excellence. And how fitting, we have a green light today. Um, we didn't do that on purpose, I promise, but it's very <laughs> fitting. Please welcome season nine queen, she's back for more, Alexis Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Joey, and Hi. thank you for the green light. <laughs> yes. I feel very at home. Yes, um, I, yeah, I would expect nothing less. I, just, I do have one question, though. Why isn't she green today? Well, you know, it's white. It picks up, <laughs> picks up whatever I'm around, and uh, green lighting is in my rider, so. It's in your rider. Yeah. <laughs> you do look wonderful today, I have to say. I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just, this look is next level. It's incredible, just for our interview. This Come whole on. thing? <laughs> this whole thing. Just pulled it out of the closet. <laughs> I am, though, I'm so sure, I'm sure you're so sick of talking about the green, are you? No, I don't no. mind. No, honestly, like, the, the green thing, the whole sort of, like, I mean, I wasn't really doing like a witch look when I did that, that exceptional green look for, you know, when it, when it was time to lip sync for my life. But, um, but my fascination with green does stem from the Wicked Witch of the West, yeah. well before I even knew what Wicked was. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even think the book was written, you know, when I was a kid. Someone fact check that, see when Wicked was written. You were born in 1995? Oh, so maybe it was. <laughs> now, long before, you know, Wicked was a thing. Wizard of Oz, favorite movie of all time. And this sort of equal parts fascination, fear, curiosity yeah. with the Wicked Witch of the West, I think she was clearly misunderstood, mm -hmm. you know? Very much so, yeah. yes. As a lot of queens on Drag Race are often very much misunderstood. You don't say. Oh, yes. <laughs> I picked up what you were putting down. I, I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, let's, you know, we do, I do want to dive into that moment, though, because it is such, it's still a fan favorite sure. moment. Every, there's memes constantly. It is just, it's a moment that lives in fans' hearts. I, I've always wanted to know how Tamar really reacted in the moment. Like, what was that like actually saying that to her in the moment and then her reaction? Were you just like frozen with fear? I mean, clearly it was such a like knee-jerk reaction for me. I did not think that all the way through, but it was just like, you know, I knew at that point, I knew I was gonna have to lip sync for my life. Cause yeah. one thing I can say about my experience in the show biz is you know when you bomb. And I was like, Whew. Girl, you bombed, get ready. At least the lip sync was good that week. I was like, okay, yes. it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be all right. You know, so I think I was just in like defense, like fight or flight mode. And so when she said that, I was like, come on girl. Of all the things that went wrong today, at least give me credit for showing up to Michelle's function, you know, mm -hmm. in spirit. You know, and for you her roast. Good TV. You gave yes. us good TV. That is what matters. I'll tell you yeah. a little something. Oh, yes. A little behind Ooh. the scenes. Ooh. When cameras went down, she looked over to me and was like, Tamar? Yeah. Oh, gosh. What did you say back to her? I was like, Namaste. <laughs> That's sweet. No, and nice because yeah. I feel like a lot of people think that like just because they see it on TV, that means you actually like hate each other. No, so no, no. Like, I TV. mean, I live for her, and you know, we had we had a sweet moment. Yeah, so, yeah. that is nice. No, that is a nice end to that story. Um, now, the green glow up. I have to ask, might we be seeing some green iterations on the runway for All Stars Eight? We'll have to see, won't we? I just love that. The green light the is little, just- The little green cast. It's, it's this so much always in my shadow, <laughs> you know? I will tell you, there is a truly magical, truly serendipitous moment that happened early in the season that when it happened, as it unfolded, my head exploded. And this light is a little hint, and that's all I'm gonna say. Great, that is the best tease I think I've ever heard for somebody who's not allowed to say too much about the season that anybody's ever given. Let's talk after the first episode, oh, and I yes. will tell you what happened. Okay, Yes. very excited. <laughs> have your run on your original season. Very interesting. It's great to see you back. What is maybe one thing or maybe a perception among the fandom? Because like you said, a lot of queens are misunderstood in their original seasons. What's maybe one perception in the fandom that you hope to maybe like, I don't know, correct is the right word, but something you wanted to prove on All Stars 8? You know, I think where 
people may have misunderstood me or I might not have been everybody's cup of tea the first time, I think. I'm really emotional, really sensitive. I totally wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm very open. And when you are in the experience that is Drag Race, because it's really hard. I mean, you've probably heard ladies say this from the show. It's really, up until that point, it was the hardest thing I'd ever done, for sure. It's exhausting, it's emotionally exhausting. And you know, the race is real. I remember reading an interview with Ginger Minj years ago, and she talked about how they really mean it when they say race. Yeah. And it's true, you know, pretty much anything you're doing as part of the competition, there's a clock running. So the pressure is so high, and I think that the sort of wonderful, emotional creature that I am, when you put somebody like that in that situation, it can be a little bit of a ticking time bomb. So like, you know, moments where either I lost my cool or I lost like a sense of what's going on, that was really just like human moments yeah. that everybody has. And um, so my, you know, coming back again, I just want to have fun. And, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything because truth is like, you're not gonna be for everybody. And um, I just wanted to go back and try to be my most authentic self. Do you think it was easier to do that coming back for All Stars, uh, sort of settling into that and, and standing more in your uh, confidence and individuality, I guess you can say, versus going on TV for the first time, like on your original season, was it easier to sort of immerse yourself into that dynamic the second time? You know, it's twofold, because on one hand, I think the first time, it's sort of like ignorance is bliss or, you know, you don't know exactly what's happening or what's coming and so it's a little easier to be carefree. Yeah. But going back, you actually do know what's possible for, the, for, for better or for worse. Yeah. And so that can be sort of two-sided. And then in addition to that, after going through the experience the first time and being out in the world and touring the world and meeting people, it does, help you establish your confidence in who you are. And so I think that part definitely bolsters you, you know, to go back a yeah. second time. But I will say, I had this notion, this crazy notion, and I know a lot of my sisters from this season shared it, was that it was gonna be easier going back a second time. We were wrong. I don't know if it's being a few years older or past a pandemic or what. I thought it was much harder. It's wild. Y'all are in for a treat. Is this your first time um, being asked to come back? This was the first. Yeah. Just like when I was cast the first time on season nine, I was so grateful that that was the year that it happened because I'd tried eight times yeah. before I got on the first time. That was the most ready I ever would have been for the experience and just like this time around, you know, while I wondered, oh, am I gonna be asked? Will I not ever be asked? When it finally came, I was like, you know what? It was meant to be this was when I was ready. Season nine has a really great reputation as having one of the strongest top four queens ever with, I mean, Shay, Trinity, and Sasha all winning titles on the show. Too. Strongest top five ever, oh, too. Top five ever, too. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I was just speaking, of course, of the, uh, yeah. in terms of the finale, but yes, top five, of course. No, yeah. I mean, it's it's a legendary season. It's funny, when we were on the first time, some people sort of belly ached that there was not enough drama because we all got along so well. Yeah, yeah. But then after that, then everybody was missing season nine and the legendary queens of mm -hmm. season nine. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, that season was stacked. I remember day one, standing around that table, looking around the room and going, oh, <laughs> this is not gonna be easy mm -hmm. at all. My estimation was correct. Those queens are impressive. Yeah. And I've been told that a lot. I've been told, you know, some people would have loved to see me, you know, go even further of than course, I did. And they said, any other year, <laughs> you might have. But I, I take that only as, a, you know, a compliment to my lovely OG yeah. cast members, because they're amazing. It is interesting though, because I, you know, I always feel like you see the fans saying like, season nine had very little drama and fans were like, oh, that's a season where they were all friends. So was that really the case on set and after? Is like there's still a season nine group chat going on? We got along very well, very easily. There was not much drama to speak of, which I think left everybody looking over their shoulder a little bit, wondering how everyone was gonna 
come off mm -hmm. because the talent, the drag, the friendship, that was all mm -hmm. solid. But yeah, we really got along and I have deep bonds with many yeah. of my season nine sisters and we still have the group chat. It's not tended to. Uh, as frequently <laughs> as, as it that. used to be. But every once in a while, when something important happens, mm -hmm. we'll pop back to the group chat, you know? Yeah. Who's the craziest in the group chat? In the group chat, it was probably Eureka or Cynthia. Oh, Cynthia, yeah. yeah. Did you see her post the other day? I heard she's having hip surgery. Yeah, yeah. We Gotta love you, out. Cuckoo. Mm -hmm. Gotta send out positive vibes to Miss Cynthia. Speedy healing. Yes, 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 yes. It was a family-oriented season, I guess you could say. How does that compare to the experience on All Stars 8? Like, is Untucked going off in All Stars 8? Buckle up. <laughs> this season is going to give you everything you want. All the colors, all the shades. And I'll tell you, it gets spicy. It gets very spicy on more than one occasion. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still Sisterhood of the Traveling Panties. So, like I said, it's gonna give you everything. I'm just trying to imagine like you in the same room with Candy and Jimbo, and it's like. <laughs> I imagine it's gonna be, yeah, fire. It's gonna be great. Yes. <laughs>things that people loved so much about you the first time around. Snatch Game, as Liza, <laughs> so great. Yeah. Like, the palace is constantly, like anytime I see the word <laughs> palace anywhere, I read it in your voice, I'm, I cannot lie. But we know Snatch Game on All Stars always steps it up in a big way. So do you think All Star 7 this past summer set a new bar for queens going forward? And did that put maybe pressure on you, since you did so well in Snatch Game the first time around, to do well the second time if you make it that far? Yes. When I saw All Star 7 Snatch Game, AKA the Jinx Monsoon <laughs> Snatch yes. Game, I was watching it and my eyes were just got bigger and bigger and bigger at the screen. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. And then I was like, yeah. because, I mean, Jinx was really, for me, a very special Snatch Game in her original season, you know? When I auditioned for season five, the two people in my audition tape for Snatch Game were Liza and Little Edie. Oh, God. So, and I, and what's funny is I think that Liza was Jinx's backup for that yeah. season, too. Yeah. So, very close to my heart. I knew exactly who Little Edie was. Mm -hmm. She did not have to educate me on that. Yeah. But it was so masterful and so funny. So going back, you know, she clearly was like, I gotta deliver again, and she rewrote the rule book. Definitely. I mean, that was powerful stuff. Mm -hmm. If you do a character who sings, it's very difficult because you can't sing copywritten material. The Rue And so the genius of doing RuPaul material, as Judy, I was like, Psh. yeah. So yeah, it, it definitely added a notch of like, how do you level up when it's been leveled all the way up, yeah. you know? Can you give us a little of your little Edie? <laughs> Joey. No. <laughs> you look absolutely terrific, honestly. You've got mesh on. I don't know if uh, this is feathers or part of the cats. <laughs> <laughs> so great, so great. No, it is only fitting though. Okay, you did Little Edie. It, since she played your Snatch Game mother on All Star 7, can you, as Liza, react to Jinx's Judy Garland? Oh. <laughs> it's Mama. Mama's on telly. <laughs> Hi, Mama. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I can die now. That's, I've, I've witnessed, I've witnessed it in person. I can die. <laughs> um, so who do you think has had some of the best and worst Snatch games since yours? Well, of course, Jinx is, you know, probably at the top of the list for best. The ones I don't think any of us saw coming necessarily were Aquarius and yes. GG Good. Aquarius' choice was bold and very timely and, and that's always great. And I think that there's a lot built into Melania that would make for a great Snatch Game performance. But I don't know that people were anticipating Aquaria to be able to deliver the way that she did and deliver she did. Um, and same with Gigi, I mean, just it, in a way even more of a wow because it was such a shocking so, character so choice. Weird character, you yeah. were like, wait, you're doing a what? what? But it was brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. So I think anytime you can offer like an element of surprise in performance, that's always fun. And I think both of those 
people really surprised us, and that's always such a thrill. Simone as Harriet Tubman is also another Brilliant. one of those ones that in that same vein, where you're like, how are you gonna do this as a comedy character? Right. Simone was so smart with that. Simone is probably one of the few people that could make that work as well as it did, because what she did was she brought herself to it, and that was, I mean, Simone, we yeah. just love her. Yeah, She's the lovely. sweetest, loveliest, most charismatic star. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the fact that she was able to sort of apply her own warmth and magic to Harriet was yes. so great. Yeah. I'm gonna give a special shout out to, to Mick because oh, Paris. I really loved Paris. For me, not since Anna Nicole that Adore did, not since then was there that kind of like embodiment of spirit. Well, other than, you know, Liza. But, yes, um, of course. Of but course. I really, I really love that. Yes. Whenever somebody knows the person intimately, which in Gottmik's case, it was person to person, yeah. you know, they've worked together plenty. But even for me, like with Liza, the reason that worked is I know her, her career, her history very, very well. And so yep. when you know someone like that, you can embody. And so when people are able to embody, that's always really fun. <laughs> I want to go back to season nine very quickly too, because I know that sometimes people take things from set and it can be a whole thing in itself. So did you take anything from the set? I have a very special memento here with me. So your journal from the season, like the hotel journal. This is the composition notebook that I kept. It says Alexis Michelle RPDR9. Everybody remembers who our special guest was on <laughs> season uh, nine, episode one. Are you gonna- Lady Gaga. Oh so she came in, and I'll just, just to really build up the drama for a second, you know, mm -hmm. she walked in, we were like, oh, who's that? And what I didn't clock right away, I saw how tall her shoes were, but I didn't go, oh, if she's that tall in those, she'll be however tall when she takes them off. Cause that would have been the first clue. Cause you know, she's pretty petite she's and- Five two, yeah. Um, and those shoes are tall. Mm -hmm. But she was decked out head to toe in these crystals, including a crystal mask over her face. Yeah. And she finally took it off in front of us and was like, hey guys, it's me. <laughs> and she left the mask in the room Tell me that you have. and we broke off My little God. pieces of it. Alexis. So here is oh, wait, a little piece of Lady Gaga's mask. Oh my God, that's so great. That she uh, that she left us in the workroom. And I don't know if she meant to leave it or if we stole it, but anyway. <laughs> Either way, you have it. I that's have it, which is what really matters. And coincidentally, oh look, this is, I had this on the back of my, oh. of my journal. That didn't age well. No. I mean, it was so crazy because I was watching a lot of CNN when I was in the hotel. Yeah. And when we were filming in the summer, it looked like everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, then the apocalypse happened. So you, I mean, but we still the, the Gaga that can still be a good luck charm. Let's yes, not Gaga, curse that. that is still a good luck charm. Yes, I love that. Thank you so much for bringing that. And of showing course, that, up. that is really truly like an amazing <laughs> memento from the set. I am just like a holy relic. That's what that is. I know. So the last thing I want to ask you is, I'm asking these questions to everybody, and you cannot say yourself for the first one. Okay. Um, who do you think of the All Stars 8 cast is going to surprise fans the most in terms of their glow up and performance? I will give you an answer, but let me first say, like I'll give you a real specific okay. answer, but let me first say, I think that there may be some surprise when people see this cast list. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you about every queen in this bunch is, we all had something to prove. We all had a lot to come back and say, do, look like, etc. And we did. Mm -hmm. So I think there's gonna be a lot of surprise and a lot of jaw dropping moments. But if I had to pick one person, I cannot wait to watch it myself and I cannot wait for the world to see Jessica Wilde's yes. journey yes. on this season. She is she was one of my dear friends before this experience and the bond now is just like deep, true sisterhood mm -hmm. that I feel with every girl yeah. in this bunch. This is a very, very special bunch and the passion that we brought to this season, I think really bonded us together. That's great. Yeah, a lot of people are saying Jessica. They're yeah. saying that she has a really interesting narrative this season. So who do you think in terms of the runway is gonna surprise people the most? After me. You can say yourself um, yeah first. Everybody's yeah. been saying themselves first. Yeah. 
Um, I, you know, my, one of my main objectives, cause like I said, I, I know that I can't go in and, you know, if, if somebody already doesn't care for me or if they're not gonna care for me now, I can't change that. But what I wanted to do was, I wanted to try to look like a million bucks at all times because even on season nine, I don't feel that I fully represented myself aesthetically mm. for the queen I was then. And mm. that's nothing compared to the queen that I am now when it comes to drag and aesthetics. So one of my top goals was look great at all times so that no matter what's going down, you can't say shit about that. And I, you know, I feel like that's something that I was able to achieve. But who else brought it to the runway? My New York sister, Candy Muse, brought it to the runway. We were stomping every week. But let me just say, all of my social media accounts are now Kahana Montrese Stan accounts. <laughs> Kahana Montrese is one of the finest, fiercest, most beautiful drag queens in the whole world. Don't get it twisted. We all bow down to the temple of Kahana. Oh, a lot of people have been saying her too, so Just, Jesus. Oh, honey. I cannot wait yes. to see those looks yes. on camera. Oh, baby. Mm. Well, now I can't, I can't wait either. I cannot wait. That was a very lovely tease for the season ahead. Alexis, thank you so much for always being so sweet, so kind. It really was a pleasure to talk with you today, and thank I can't you. wait to see you back on the show. So good to see thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, stay tuned for more with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8.